Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to be talking about circles. This is part one of a two-part video, where today we'll be looking at the distance around the circle, or the circumference, and also a special value we call pi. You need a few physical examples of circles of varying size. I'm using the top and bottom of this popcorn tin and glass, some various lids and cylinders from cans, and also things as small as my wedding ring. You'll also be needing either string and a ruler or a measuring tape. You'll need some paper to write down some measurements and of course a calculator. On your paper, let's make a data table with four columns. Column one, just label it object. Column two, it's the distance around the outside of the object. Column three, it's the distance across the center of the object. And column four, it's the distance around divided by the distance across. I'm going to show you how to fill in the data table with one of my circles, and then I'll have you pause the video and collect measurements from the circles that you have from your household. I'm going to show you how to fill in this data table using this lotion tin. First, we'll measure the distance around the outside of the object, and then the distance across the center of the object. First, let's label the object as top of lotion. There are two ways you can measure around this object. You could use a measuring tape, which is the method I'm going to use because I have one, and if you happen to not have a measuring tape, but you have a ruler or a yardstick, you can just take some string. Use the string and wrap it around the object that you're measuring. Use your finger to record the distance and sort of kind of pinch it. And then pick the string up. And then you can go to your yardstick or your ruler. And then you can measure that distance. It's not a super accurate way to measure, but it is a sufficient approximation. Since I have a measuring tape, I'm going to use it. So I just wrap the measuring tape around the lid, and I can see that it comes to 13 and 1 8. So on my data table, I'm going to want to record 13 and 1 8. But instead of just writing 1 8, I'm going to record 1 8 as a decimal. So here I've made a list of the increments of 1 8 and their decimal equivalents. So I can just write 13 and 1 8 as 13.125. And this is inches. All right, now let's measure the distance across the center of the object. If you're having to use the string and ruler method, use a ruler here when you measure the distance across the center of the object. Using the ruler or the measuring tape, find the distance across the center of the object. One note is that the distance across the center is going to be the longest possible measurement. Notice when I'm measuring here, clearly a little bit off center, I'm getting four inches. But whenever I put it where it's supposed to be, it's actually a little bit closer to four and one eighth. So 4 and 1 eighth is going to be 4.125 inches. So now let's record the distance around divided by the distance across. So I'm going to type in 13.125 divided by 4.125 and hit enter. And because I have three decimal places of accuracy here, I'm going to just use three decimal places of accuracy here. So 3.182. So should I write 3.182 inch, or just leave it blank? Yeah, we should just leave it blank, because this is a ratio, and this ratio was inch divided by inch. So this measurement is actually unitless. As you measure the circles and record their values, I want you to record them from least to greatest, from the smallest circle to the largest circle. Go ahead and pause the video, find some circular objects, measure the distance around them, and the center across, and calculate that ratio. Pause the video and try this on your own. All right, welcome back. Obviously, your numbers are going to be different than mine because I had different objects than you, but our results should be pretty similar. What do you notice about this last column? Yet, yeah, regardless of the size of the circles, this ratio was actually pretty consistent. It was pretty close to a number that you probably heard of previously. It's called pi. This is the Greek symbol for pi, and this is how it's spelled using our Latin letters. And all these numbers are pretty close to each other. So go ahead and average those numbers. And when I do, I got 3.167. Now pi isn't 3.167, but it actually is fairly close to that number. The most common approximation for pi is 3.14. So my average here of these 12 objects is actually pretty good that I was that close 
to that approximation of 3.14, here I'm getting 3.167. So what I want you to get from this is that the ratio of these two measurements is pi. By the way, the distance around the outside of the object, do you know that vocab term? Yeah, it's the circumference. And what about the distance across the center of the object? That's the diameter. So what is pi? Pi is the ratio of the circumference over the diameter. So let's take a look at that in a little bit of detail. So this is what we just said, that pi is the ratio of the circumference divided by the diameter. So if I provided you with just the diameter, how could you know what the circumference is? Well, using some simple algebra, if I want to get this circumference by itself, I need to get rid of this denominator. I need to make this d go away. Well, how can I do that? Well, I can multiply both sides by d. So if I multiply this side by d, and I would have to multiply this side by d, what happens to these two d's? They reduce to 1. So we just have d times pi equals c, which commonly we would write it as pi d equals c. What's something else we should know about the diameter? The diameter is 2 radii, or 2 times the radius. So this d is the same thing as 2r. And we don't usually write it as pi times 2r. We usually write it as 2 pi r. So 2 pi r equals c. Many mathematicians like to use something called tau. Tau is 2 times pi. So in that case, instead of using 2 pi r, we can just use tau times r. So the circumference is just tau r. So let's clarify what we've learned today. Pi is the ratio of the circumference divided by the diameter, and so then that means that the circumference is pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r, or just tau r. In the next video, we're going to use these same measurements, but investigate area. See you then.